our next presenter will be Terry Shade, who will be speaking on 100 billions why not to be on blockchain. Uh, Terry and I, I don't even know how we connected, but I think Terry reached out to me and we had a conversation and I was just fascinated with his contrarian outlook. Um, I, he, he very much, by the end of our conversation, uh, basically convinced me I was wrong. So I said, well, I think other people should hear this message. So it's very fascinating. So I'm looking forward to hearing what Terry has to say today. Um, hi, everybody. So my request is uh, just for 15 minutes, just put the cell phones down and listen, because this is a very contrarian topic, uh, and it's likely to be stuff you haven't heard before. Um, you see, at heart, I am an inventor. Um, I was involved in the very early days of the internet. And now, as I um, look at distributed ledger and what the next few years will bring, my inventor's heart is racing wildly. Our corporate focus at Refined Data is on real estate, sustainability, smart buildings. And we've been looking at the worlds of IoT and DLT, and we're very excited about the possibilities offered by the ninth largest cryptocurrency, one that many of you are probably only vaguely familiar with, if at all. I hate to even call it a cryptocurrency because it's about so much more than a store of value. The technology is called IOTA, and today I'd like to share with you why we're so excited to be working with the IOTA Foundation in Europe to launch the Biotosphere in the GTA. Uh, but before pulling out into the fast lane and accelerating into the future, I always think it's a good idea to check in the rearview mirror for blind spots. So Bitcoin has been around since 2008, and frankly, it's getting a bit long in the tooth, despite the numerous forks and improvements that were designed to fix the flaws that are inherently baked in to the underlying design. Ethereum is based on the same underlying blockchain protocols and proof of work. Even some of the titans in this space are now admitting that there are problems with the underlying architecture that need to be addressed before they can deliver production-ready solutions. This was published just a few days ago. It's currently estimated that by 2025, there will be somewhere between 75 billion and 100 billion connected devices on the Internet of Things. And this is probably an underestimate of what will actually happen. That's about 10 to 12 devices for every man, woman, and child then walking on the face of the planet. And every one of those devices will contain multiple sensors. Just think about the phones that you're using today. Uh, every one of them already contain an accelerometer, a magnetometer, a gyroscope, GPS, barometer, proximity sensor, light sensor, sound sensor, fingerprint reader, heart rate monitor, camera, and more. Oh, and it also makes phone calls. That's one heck of a lot of data, and it's all increasingly useful and therefore valuable to a lot of people. It was the economist that penned the meme, data is the new oil, in 2017. Today, you're all talking to Siri and Alexa, Cortana and Bixby, but before long, they'll be talking to each other and leaving you completely out of the conversation. And if data like oil is the new medium of value exchange, what protocol is going to be used to move that value between devices? So let's go back and look more closely at blockchain and why it's probably not up to the challenges. You see, all proof-of-work protocols are essentially based on a competition for scarce resources. Miners compete with each other for the right to mine the next block, while users compete with each other to have their transaction included in the next block. Pay too little, your transaction will take hours, days, or it may never confirm at all. No matter how large the block size of your favorite blockchain technology and how short the blockchain interval, the frequency at which new blocks are mined, imagine 100 billion devices 
all sending data simultaneously, and it doesn't take a mathematician to realize that every block would fill instantaneously and be hopelessly oversubscribed. The system simply cannot scale to meet demand. And blockchain technology, frankly, isn't as distributed as you might think. The top four mining pools control over 60% of the blockchain hash rate, so it's not hard to argue that blockchain is actually more centralized than the banking sector. The interests of the miners who want the highest possible transaction fee to justify the outrageous costs of mining the blockchain in the first place are diametrically opposed to the interests of the users of the system who need the lowest possible fees for every transaction. Iceland, as you've probably heard, is currently devoting more of its uh, native energy resources to blockchain mining than to residential housing, and this is simply not sustainable, and I don't care what definition of the word sustainable you prefer to use. IOTA uses a completely and fundamentally different technology called a directed acyclic graph, or DAG, to record and verify transactions and achieve consensus. This completely removes the need for blocks, for chains, for miners, and fees, completely. Now, when you do all of that, some magical things actually start to happen. Instead of a system where mining and transacting um, are performed by different sets of users who therefore have conflicting objectives, with IOTA, every user is simultaneously a miner on the system. So let me tell you how that works. In order to have my transaction validated, I have to undertake a very small amount of proof of work for two other randomly selected transactions that are on the network. And this creates a virtuous cycle where the needs, my needs are absolutely best served by serving the needs of two other strangers on the network. You can think of this like the crypto equivalent of paying it forward. Uh, eliminating miners also eliminates fees from the system. If I send you a dollar, you receive a dollar. If I send you a cent, you receive a cent. And if I want to send you data with no commercial value other than the raw data itself, I can do that because even a zero value transaction still does the proof of work for two other transactions on the network. This has an immediate scaling benefit. As the number of transactions on the IOTA tangle rises, the system actually gets faster and more efficient since more transactions generate increased capacity for verifying more transactions. This is exactly the opposite of the scale effect on blockchain, where the maximum number of transactions processed per second is actually fixed based on the block size and the frequency, the mining frequency in use at any one time. Which means that efficiencies of 10 to 100 times over existing blockchain technologies are actually realizable within the next 12 to 24 months, limited only by how quickly adoption rises. Not only is the tangle scalable, it's specifically designed so that the proof of work that's required is within the capability of all those IoT devices, from cars to thermostats, from dishwashers to elevators, drones to traffic lights, routers to shipping containers. This means that it's a lightweight protocol that can become universal because every device and every sensor on the planet can participate in the IOTA tangle. Value transfer without fees means that true micropayments are possible and practical with IOTA. So just to put this in perspective, last December, a single Bitcoin transaction would cost you about 45 US dollars to complete. And while the cost of a Bitcoin transaction is currently running at the beginning of April about a dollar, Ethereum is about a quarter, it will never be practical to send a cent or a thousandth of a cent or a millionth of a cent using these protocols. Because each IOTA transaction has to validate two other transactions and all transactions are feeless, 
IOTA makes it practical to send just data with no monetary component, which means 100% free and secure data anywhere on the planet by design. So let's look at an example of how this might affect our daily lives in the not too distant future. Um, your grandchildren are all unlikely to own cars because they'll buy mobility as a service where an autonomous vehicle takes them from A to B without worrying about fuel, insurance, parking, maintenance, tolls, or any of those other annoyances that we associate with car ownership today. But let's imagine a future in which each of you owns one of these autonomous vehicles, and it just dropped you off outside the conference center this morning. So your car is now available to perform services and conduct transactions without you until you need it to take you back home again tonight. Now your vehicle is not only an autonomous car, it has, it's an autonomous economic agent as well with its own e-wallet, which it uses to pay for financial services and earn revenue instead of costing you money in parking all day. Since your electric vehicle doesn't use gasoline, it makes micropayments each kilometer directly to the road infrastructure, and every road effectively becomes a toll road. But the cost will vary. You'll pay more for a three-lane highway at rush hour than a side street, or you might pay higher fees to get somewhere faster uh, to your destination. The car will buy insurance by the kilometer too, but it'll be at a fraction of the cost of today's insurance because autonomous vehicles will be so much safer than human-driven cars. And users who need transportation will pay for the use of your vehicle from their own e-wallets, earning you seamless passive revenue. Now, your car will register potholes and maybe black ice on the road surface using sensors in the suspension and the braking system and will sell that data back to the road infrastructure. Your vehicle may get paid or make payments by contracting with other vehicles to platoon for energy savings. You see, if our smart vehicle can save 20% of its energy cost by tucking in behind other vehicles to save energy, it would be worth a small premium for that privilege. And your vehicle will sense when it's dirty based on weather and road conditions and by its own car wash. If it needs to stop for a period, it might buy parking from a parking meter um, or buy energy from an induction plate in the road surface, or it could just pay for charging on the fly from uh, a, a charging lane that replaces the current HOV lane system that we have today. And since our future car is really just a, a glorified uh, battery on wheels, it can purchase energy at night at low rates and then drive to an office building or mall and sell that energy back at a premium, taking advantage of the, uh, the time of day arbitrage opportunities. It sounds futuristic, but the prototypes are already being developed, and IOTA will be the settlement backbone that makes it all possible. In fact, IOTA is the only protocol in existence today that could work in the scenarios I've just described. And if you think that all of this sounds like an episode of the Jetsons, uh, this is the Volkswagen uh, ID Vision revealed at the Geneva Auto Show in March. This concept car has level five autonomous capabilities, but no steering wheel, no accelerator or brake, and the first production vehicle is slated for 2022, that's just four years away. The car will have 302 horsepower, a range of 600 kilometers on a single charge, and it includes artificial intelligence and a holographic user interface, making it a mobile entertainment center. Volkswagen expects to have 15 production vehicles based on this model, by 2025. We're moving beyond the internet of things to the economy of things where data and value merge. Everything is impacted and everything is going to change. The way we think about ownership versus utility, the way we think about technology, even the margins of where we end and technology begins. And in case this all sounds too scary, one of the great things about IOTA is the way it will integrate and protect your identity and personal information. Your personal information will no longer be owned by Google 
Amazon, and Facebook because privacy is not and should not be a currency. In this new model, you own your own data and you get paid instead of large corporations based on what you're willing to share and you remain in control. VW isn't the only company betting on IOTA in a future smart world. Robert Bosch Venture Capital has invested heavily in this technology and they're joined by other large corporations who share the vision like Fujitsu, who has joined the IOTA Foundation and is actively promoting IOTA as a core component of their Industry 4.0 initiatives at the world's largest trade show, the Hanover Messe, which actually started yesterday in Germany. And major world cities are also starting to sit up and take notice. Taipei, Taiwan, with a population of 3 million, has teamed up with IOTA to um, become the world's leading smart city. Citizens in Taipei will be issued a unique Tangle ID to guarantee their digital identity, and this IOTA-based identity will be used to eliminate voter fraud, health fraud, welfare fraud, and provide more efficient and cheaper access to government services. If Taipei is doing this, why not Toronto? My own company has already made the commitment. We're launching a unique lab environment this May called the Biotosphere. The Biotosphere is a Toronto-based facility de dedicated to commercializing real-world applications built on and leveraging the IOTA DLT protocol. We encourage you to reach out to us with real-world problems you believe could be solved using IOTA as the protocol for the next industrial revolution. It's an exciting time to be alive. Thank you.